Yo, yo, guys, welcome back again today. Today, we're going to be talking about news from all around the world. Today, we're going to talk about 19 families, 19 families in Tom's Borough, if I'm correct, Georgia, which is in the middle of Georgia. 19 black families, more so African American families, have come together and they purchased 97 acres of land in Tomsboro, Georgia, right in the central part of Georgia, if I'm correct. And with this 97 acres of land that they've come together collectively and bought, this is supposed to be a safe haven, uh, somewhat of a throwback or a homage to Black Wall Street, where people of African descent all around America can actually come to this place and feel like they're safe. So these acres of land, almost 100 acres of land is also going to be there to start a community. The families have already went to Tomsboro and they've actually started to set up the community. Um, where they bought land at, it was, I think a couple hundred people live within that limits, that area, that city. And their main purpose is to, like I said, have a safe space for people of African descent in America to come to and feel safe while they're camping or relaxing or hunting. I think they're gonna have a shooting range there as well. Um, and just be in a very safe environment with your own people, obviously, you know, good people, good people of African descent. So I thought that was really amazing. It's actually interesting because they're thinking about once the city starts to build up or if it gets big enough, I suppose they're going to actually incorporate that land, uh, trying to, I guess, make it into its own city. Uh, or maybe neighborhood, I don't know exactly yet, but I guess probably would be city if they're trying to incorporate it. But I thought that was interesting. Uh, maybe one day we can all go down there and, and, and see how it is. I, I thought that would be pretty dope. I actually have family in Georgia, so when I'm down there, I'm gonna try to actually go down there and try to visit this land. It's so crazy that, you know, it's 2020, but in the 1800s, and my facts might be a little bit wrong because I'm going off top of the dome right now, I'm going off top of the head. But in like the 1800s uh, and maybe even early 1900s, I have to double check, you know, African-Americans had so much land in America. And a lot of people don't realize that this land is very important because for one, we were growing our own food and we, you know, we knew how to actually grow our own food. And we were at one with nature for the most part, like we always was for thousands and thousands of years, whether it was in America and Africa and Australia, wherever it might have been, right? South America. But now, if I'm correct, it's less than 1% of people of African descent in America that actually own land. So some people would try to ask, why would that be important? Well, if you think about it, if you own land, you can obviously develop things and build things. And also if you own the air rights and then the ground rights, obviously, you know, if you find natural resources or if there's airspace on top of it, it's a possibility to make it private airspace. It's also important because a lot of the industries within the world or in America are based off of energy and food. And if a lot of people of African descent in America, whether you're African American, whether you're Nigerian, whether you're Ethiopian, whether you're South African or Jamaican, if we own land and that land was a huge producer of food, then that means that the African descent people in America could grow in the economy and the group economics could do better because we would own a ridiculous amount of land with a ridiculous amount of food, which some huge corporation and or just private individuals would have to pay us for this food. Everything doesn't have to be a monumental move. This is what people don't realize. We There's a lot of us in this world as far as melanated people and that everything doesn't have to be, oh, I have to be the next revolutionary or I have to be the most important person in the community. No, the mentality should be is to think as one or to think as close to one as possible for the majority so we can accomplish things and that really should be the goal more than always just looking for one person to lead a group of people out of a, of a bad situation even though that's very possible we've seen it happen before but i think that it's more smarter and more stronger if all of us as individuals, not just in America, but in Africa, in Asia, in South America, in Australia, all around the world, people of African descent and melanated people, if we start to understand that it's about the collective and not necessarily about yourself individually all the time. And if we do that, like we just bought 97, the 19 black families bought 97 acres of land, 
look what you can do. You can do anything. It's about unity and understanding. I always tell people this all the time. You don't always have to agree on everything. You don't have to agree on religion. You don't have to agree on food. But when it's time to get things done, it's very important to put those things all aside and get whatever needs to be done, done. And then you can go back to, you know, speaking about what you agree and disagree with. So I think this is very important. I think land is very important. Property, land, very important. If you don't have a degree or, you know, that's even a changing thing nowadays. But let's say, for instance, you're still one of those people that think you need to go to school to be something or make something of yourself. Or you're one of the people that don't or maybe can't afford to go to school. You always got to realize property, property, land. People always need land. People are always going to need a place to live. And people are always going to need food. So investing into farms or investing into farming or food sectors within any country that has an abundance of food that majority of the world needs is probably a good investment in the long term. Maybe even in the short term. It just depends on what country you live in. Now let's talk about Mitchell Elegby. I hope I said his name right. He's the CEO uh, and owner of InnerSwitch, which is a Nigerian tech-based company, financial tech-based company. So they started in 2002 and what they did was they united all Nigerian banks. They also did many other things between 2002 to 2020. And they've done things like make sure that transactions can be on time and be on a timely basis. So anybody in Nigeria can send money to other people on time and keeping records of these transactions as well as making sure that these transactions go through. They also brought Nigerian's banking system up to certification. So they've done a lot of things. They've also done things with ATMs within Nigeria. They've done many, many things and they're looked at as being one of the big tech companies in Africa. And this year they're gonna be at Disrupt in 2020 on September 16th. And the CEO of the company will actually be talking. So this company is considered a FinTech company and a FinTech company is a company that offers other companies or non-companies services financially through the financial sector. So this is really going to be interesting. On September 16th, you can watch it virtually. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll watch it and I'll record it and maybe I can put my input into it. But this is very interesting because at the conference, Disrupt 2020, they're going to be talking about the other fintech companies that are starting up in Africa, other startup companies, and the next upcoming companies within Africa and how COVID-19 has affected all entrepreneurs in Africa and throughout the diaspora and outside of Africa, people of African descent. So I thought this was very interesting. Uh, the company actually is going to go globally public. I don't know exactly when, but if I find out more, I'll let you guys know. I would love to invest in this company. Um, obviously, I this is the first time I've actually even heard of this company. But I'm trying to get better at keeping up with everything of people of African descent all around the world. It's very hard. It's just, every day there's thousands of things in each country happening probably. But I think technology, for one, is one of the number one things that us as African descent people need to focus on. You know, if you have a little kid, especially if you're in Africa watching right now, teach them how to code, teach them how to code, teach them how to code. There's free programs. They're not always offered in different countries. I know in Brazil or Jamaica or in certain parts of Africa or Asia or whatever it might be, especially if they're American companies. But whatever you can do, invest in coding in your kids, invest in your kids understanding technology and trying to create technology and trying to create solutions for problems that exist where you live right that's one major way to make a lot of money is to solve problems a lot of times they'll say in entrepreneurship the number one way to be a successful entrepreneur is that you solve someone's problems right so i would suggest teaching your kids technology 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 don't get me wrong if you want them to be a doctor that's good if you want them to be a dentist that is great nothing wrong with those fields but Technology is the future. I also think that you can free yourself up from being in one physical location, right? That's all. That's actually the premise uh, or the the ethos behind cryptocurrency, right? To decentralize uh, banks and to create a currency that is secured that anybody can transfer money in a quick second all around the world. And I think technology is very important. And I think investing in technology companies are extremely important, especially 
black owned technology companies and uh, you know companies that are trying to better infrastructure and how money and financial situations uh move right because the, the world is a very fast place and if you can't keep up with technology if you can't keep up with transactions you know, you're going to lose out on money. You're going to lose out on opportunities. You're going to lose out on other people wanting to do business with you. So staying up to date, even better than up to date, always thinking about the next best thing. Yeah, you've created this amazing thing, but what's the next step after that? That's very important. So a lot of uh, the Nigerian ethos or the Nigerian thought is to actually have the whole country to be moneyless or, you know, physical currency and to all be digital. So that was sort of kind of the thought process behind Nigeria in general. And then obviously, you know, different tech companies like InnerSwitch. So we'll be talking on the 16th. Uh, I'm definitely gonna watch. I'm actually gonna go to the website and actually try to put my uh, name in there so I can get alerts so I can watch. And maybe I'll record it and put it on here. But technology, invest, invest, invest. I'm very interested in this company because I've already invested in Africa uh, maybe throughout the last four years and I'll continue to invest in Africa and I might not even look at my investments for well of course I'm gonna look at my investments but I'm saying I might not even touch my investments until I'm 60 70 years old because for one first of all I care about people of African descent and their well-being even more than me being a billionaire or trillionaire if that would happen that would be nice I would you know try to do the best that I can to help as many people as I could or what I think should be done right but at the end of the day, even if I'm investing thousands and thousands of dollars into startup companies or Africa, whatever it might be, right, which I try, I'm not a rich person by any means, but I try to save up my money throughout time and then make smart investments. Regardless of all that, my main goal or my importance is to make sure that the life of people of African descent all around the world is better. The life and every black kid, girl, boy older younger middle age they have as good as opportunity as they can have to live a good life the way that they should and they do deserve as a human being right so even if i don't ever see the investments back from my money i want you guys to start thinking about this even if you never see investments back from your money we're not just talking about getting yourself rich standpoint right here if you really care we're talking about future generations do they have to go through the stuff that we have to go through? Do you want that to stop? If you do, then money doesn't mean anything because you know at some point you're going to leave this earth. So what are you going to leave for the next generation? What are you going to leave for the embetterment of a place where people of African descent all around the world can go if something bad is happening to them or if they want to go home, if they want to feel like they belong? We understand every society, doesn't matter what race you are, there's poverty, there's rich, and there's good and bad people. It just is what it is. It don't matter if you're all around all black people, there's still gonna be some black people that cause trouble. But at least we can govern ourselves and at least we can make our own decisions on how we take care of things. And that's the main point. So I'll be definitely watching this company and I think that technology is the future of Africa. So the last place we're gonna talk about is Namibia. I love Namibia, especially the deserts, right? And certain peoples in Namibia. I actually have friends in Namibia. Shout out to Landi, what up? You know who you are. The Namibian Airlines is going to cut 50% of wages for the employees that are currently on leave right now, if I'm correct. And the airlines is stating that they need 477 million United States dollars, which is 8 billion Namibia billion uh, dollars, if I'm correct. And they said they need that to stay afloat and to eventually to progress and, you know, get past being in deficit or being in the negative. And they were basically saying once they do do that, then they will return back to normal operations where they're paying people their full salaries. And the government has actually only bailed out the company with one tenth of what they need. So one tenth of the $477 million. So there's a lot of communication going back and forth, but also the head of the crew union is also not happy with these 50% cuts of wages for some employees and feels like the company is attacking the employees and the flight crew. So hopefully this gets resolved. They've been having somewhat of financial problems throughout the last five years, Namibian Airways. And I know that the coronavirus and the bans that some governments put on flights in and out of countries can definitely be hurtful, especially the people in the airline industry, regardless of what company, but especially in Namibia. So I hope this gets figured out but if you are one of those people that are in Namibia, then let me know what you think about this. Let me know how you feel about the traveling and what you think about 
the bans and if they should be lifted off or if they if it's a good thing for the country obviously i don't live in namibia but i have people in namibia so if you can chime in let me know what you think about that so guys today that's more news from people of african descent all around the world please like and subscribe please turn on the bell notification down there so you'll always get my videos and please like all my social medias which is instagram snapchat twitter soundcloud and facebook also go down to the merch store we have new merchandise down here yes we have merchandise guys please go buy every day for the next week i'll be adding new merchandise so go down there check out my merchandise store see if you guys like anything it would be greatly appreciative the more that we help each other including you guys helping me the more that i can do the more i can travel the more videos and things i can bring to you about people of african descent and the culture and just learning in general you know about the world and the world that we live in so guys check out that merch store and go buy something and until next time love each other always learn from each other always share knowledge with each other and try to be diplomatic with each other and yo guys peace one love